Hello and welcome. Welcome to this gloomy Arctic Saturday. I've had a disaster this morning. I broke my glasses. So I broke my glasses, I broke my teeth, I broke my back. The list is getting longer. Right then, got something a bit more interesting this morning. I've got to start cubing up some of this timber, but the first thing, I want to have a look because I've got a new worktop in the kitchen in mind. When I built their worktops in the kitchens four years ago, I just used what shit was lying around and um, it weren't very good. It weren't very good at all. Anyway, so uh, this came out the churchyard. I'm going to turn you around. So Jürgen and Lars, I worked with them on Wednesday to take down this big birch. I say I worked with them. Elijah came to me and asked me if I wanted the timber out the churchyard, but well, obviously I do. Anyway, initially I thought it'd all be firewood, but look. So that's, that's the base section. They don't come a lot bigger than this. This is uh, the bottom section. We had to cut it up like this just to get it out of the churchyard. Half a metre wide on the short section. And then I've got over here I've got the midsection and the top section. Now that one over there, that's the one I cut down yesterday. That's just firewood I think. But these, anyway, we're going to cut these up on the sawmill today and see what we've got. See if I can get some uh, big holes out of them. Look at that view. Only means one thing. It means we're a very short way away from our first snow. I keep saying this, but it's coming. Right. So um, I've run the metal detector over it. It's got no metal in it. We're going to stick it on here and run it. See what's inside. tell you is this is the largest log I've ever had on this sawmill and I ain't reached maximum yet but I'm gonna in a minute yeah very exciting
Okay. Then for those that you know, but for those that you don't, they don't know what you're looking at, I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's going to make a very nice kitchen countertop. So that's the first cut we took off there. And then this is a slab. It's, it's not a lot of it. But you have to bear in mind how few hardwoods. This is the only hardwood I have access to in the Arctic region. So we'll be keeping that as well. Yeah, very nice. I'm very happy with that. So in the time I've been here, and now I've poured water everywhere. You know, sometimes, right, in the time I've been here, I found all kinds of interests and inventions and adaptations, and I'm thinking, this is weird. Why did they do that? Or why did they think of that? Or why did they think of the other? Well, I'll tell you why. Because most, most of the men, 60 years and above, all have broken backs. Most of the men, 80 years and above, will walk with sticks or are bent over. And that's because most of the men here worked in the forest. And most of the men here, due to hard physical labour, lifting things that are too heavy, harsh conditions, all have serious back problems. And, and that's why the surgery I had was developed um, here in Sweden. In fact, I actually know the surgeon that worked on the development of the exact surgery I had for 30 years. Anyway, I can't turn that anymore. Two, three years ago, I'd have been able to turn that. I can't, I can't twist it. So um, we're gonna do this with the machine. But uh, that's a good case for an LT40 or something bigger with hydraulic rolls. This is a manual machine. I bought this is because this is what basically I could borrow to get it. Um, but let's see what my skills are like. I'm going to try and turn it. And of course, the sawmill, it's not permanently positioned. This is a temporary building I built a few years ago for the old sawmill. And it's just on pallets. So I can't put any pressure on the sawmill. I'll knock the rails out of line. Gently, gently. I was going to do it, and then I thought, mm, turn the camera on, Simon, because that way, if you uh, if you mess up, or if you're a success, you've captured it, right? Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I'm really happy. Look what I found. I got the colours. So it gets better. Now we're into the heart of the timber.
So I would guess this branch here, I could count the rings to be sure, but that's how big the tree was when the church was built. That's where I am with it. This branch here was cut off when they tidied up the tree when it was built because we're on the bottom section. Kamikaze wasplet. The wasps are all asleep and as soon as you make any noise, they send them out to stop the noise. Right, we'll keep going. I'm sure that's just going to get better. Right, now we work on the middle section. This is the middle part of the tree. We've done the bottom part of the tree. See what we can get out of this. This is a middle section. Look at that. So that's the bottom section, stacked and sticked. But this is the second board off of the mid section. Must have been there in its life, but something was driving it up to the surface. See how it's coming up? Well, that was enough to. Now it has got a bend there, but that happened after the break. Wasps. So that's. Um, I would do if I can't, I can't hold so many things at once. There you go.
Oh, that's the bottom and the middle section. So, um, once I'd fitted a new blade and slid it along, it hadn't come up. That was just the thickness of the first level that I cut. And then when I've moved the log, I've leveled it. So it must have just been time for that blade to go. Oh, I could go on about blades. Should I? Okay, Woodland Mills. So at the moment, all I can afford is the standard blades that Woodland Mills sell. You can move up specifically to the Ripper 37, which is an outstanding blade, and they make all kinds of claims about the percentage increase in materials that you make using that blade. These are just cheap, nasty, off-the-shelf blades. The reason for that is Woodland Mills build to a budget. So for all you owners out there of Woodland Mills, they're a really, really, really good saw for a budget. And that's the thing you've got to remember. These are built to a price to fit into a certain price range. They're not a wood miser. They're definitely not a wood miser. They're built on a price. Everything is manual. How helpful are they? In some ways, they're really helpful. In other ways, they're not. So I've seen a lot of guys with problems with blades snapping, flying off. Aquaplaning is probably a, a, a vast majority of the problems. Uh, don't use water on them, I don't need them. If your blade's overeating, slow down and wait for a minute. They're aquaplaning. And you really, when you do use water, you need one drip a second. Far less water than you might think. So, once you've finally got your saw tuned in, and it's gonna take you six months to a year to understand the workings of one of these, you can set them up and you can just go to it. You're gonna break blades, things are gonna be flying off. I don't know, it just takes a while to work in. Mine's dialed in now, but the blades, you have gotta make sure when you're sharpen to cut the gussets, right? You gotta make sure you do that because the little cracks appear and that's when your blades snap. That one that snapped, I sharpened that this morning and I, I sharpened the gussets extra deep to make sure I got all the little cracks out. It's, I don't know, I reckon it's six to eight to ten hours past the cutting time. I was expecting to lose that blade and you do get them, but it didn't break on the weld, it just snapped. It was just, that was enough. Um, what can you get out of a blade? Oh, you can get hundreds of metres of board hundreds of metres of board out of a blade um, on softwood and without bark. So we discussed the skinning and I skin them for a reason. You'll go through a lot of blade skinning with the dirt and the bark and everything else because these don't have a pre-cut um, like many of the more expensive saws and they're more expensive for a reason. So it's not because they've got wood miser. I'll keep picking on wood miser. It's not because they got wood miser down the side. It's because that's like the top end of band source. Have I ever gone through so many blades in my life as this? No. Have I ever had a machine as cheap as this? No. And and I think that's where I am with it. You know, you do in this world get what you pay for, by and large. It's a budget machine. It's the best budget machine. Out of all the band saws, the Woodland Mills is the best budget machine. Can you use it professionally? Well, I do. Could you class me as professional? Yeah, but most of the wood I cut is for myself. But anyway, so uh, there we are. Right, now we're gonna go on to the top section. We'll only get a little bit out of the top section, but I think it's worth doing. I think we could get some more boards. So this, this is all the timber I need for the kitchen remodel. When I um, uh, first built the kitchen, all I had was some old benches that were in the cellars. And I made the kitchen worktops out of that, but. I won't be able to use this for a year. So I'm saying kitchen remodel will be finished 15th of December, 2022. Yeah, I'll be there. And that will be outstanding. So we're gonna, we're gonna go and do the top now.
Oh, I'm about to put me out on, it's got so cold. So that's a good, a good morning. That's what that is, that's a good morning. That's got all that up. And uh, like I said, it wasn't supposed to rain, so. Anyway, that's gonna wrap this section of it up for today. We're gonna go and work on a project you haven't seen yet, so. Um, secret project, it's not a secret project. Well, it is secret, because you haven't seen it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider it. Don't cost you nothing, but it might eventually make all this work worthwhile for me. Thanks very much. Bye for now.